In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Puppy Training 101. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. First of all, I want you to introduce to you Hazel. She's a Labradoodle and she's a lovely little dog. She's one of my friend's dogs, Rachel Nanaka, and they've just gotten themselves the cutest little smart puppy who we get to use in today's video. So first thing now, I'd love you to like this video. Give a thumbs up to Hazel. Hazel's a great example of a well, well-trained dog. She's, her owners or her parents, as I prefer to call them, did a great job of selecting a pup that really suits their family. And one who in particular, I mean, is really amenable to training. Um, what I wanted to do today in, in the video is just talk about some of the specific things that I see as a veterinarian and sort of the veterinarian's point of view of how you should be looking at training and the really important things to focus on. The biggest principle I want you guys to start with, with, with any um, dog that you're starting to train with, is really think that's most important is you have to earn their trust. Um, so what we're really focusing on, I want you to encourage to be focused on, is you know really, really building that human-animal bond, um, you focusing on positively reinforcing your dog, um, just starting off really gently, we're just starting off with really simple things, but you're starting as soon as you get them. And one of those big questions I'd often get asked, you know, what's the best time to start training? My neighbor says six months. No, it's as soon as your dog comes home. So you guys can start with using a number of different things. The easiest thing that I would always talk to clients about is starting with something that's you know, most in demand by your pup. Most of these puppies are fairly food driven and they really love treats. So with Hazel, um, I've got I've got some kibble here. She responds to that because she's so so, and that's what she gets a reward from. Um, it could be something even more enticing uh, for some of the dogs who are not as food driven. You know, think about like a chopped liver, um, chopped chicken, for instance. A really yummy smelling, healthy quality protein. When you guys first bring your new pup home, your you know first big thing is you want them to become comfortable. You're not going to become demanding in any way. And when you start with just simple, simple training, you're, you're talking about lure training or food lure training, we're using food as a positive reward or reinforcement. We're just asking for really simple things. We, initially, we're just going to reward your pup. We're just you know making an interaction with you. He's a, oh, look at you. So as soon as I said her name, she reacted and she got a reinforcement. I mean, she's pro progressed beyond that. But that's your just initial, initial thing. We've got something that she really likes food. I'm getting her to have eye contact with me, um, cause a reaction where she's looking at me for some type of guidance and she's getting something good paired with that. And at the same time, I'm using my voice. My voice is a bit higher. I'm like, good girl, Hazel. I'm, you know, I'm matching that with praise. Like, good girl, yes, you are. Good girl, you. So she's seeing that, so she's starting to feel this, like there's something good about this guy. I think I'm gonna get, you know, he asked me to do something, I'm gonna react and I'm gonna uh, get something positive out of it. Other rewards come in the form of things like squeaky toys. Oh, hey, what's that, Hazel? Okay, Along with, as I said earlier, the praise. One of the other things I would often see in vet practice is, you know, clients that would come in and they get that principle and they 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 feel super fond of their dog they're they're super attached to them but they have a real hard time setting limits so the other thing comes with you know positively reinforcing the action that you want in terms of you know having your dog to sit having your dog to stay having your dog you know recall or come on come on command um, but at the same point you're you know you have a certain limits that you have expectations about your dog and they want that and they feel secure by getting that. So the other big, big thing, especially initially, is that I mean, as much as possible, you're in control of your pup so that they're able to be successful. And you're, what you're wanting to do is set them up for success. 
So imagine Hazel wasn't as well trained as she is. She's just a, you're a little star dog, you. And you're very, very relaxed. She's got a great, really super easy going demeanor, makes it much more easy to train her. But regardless that, you know, she's still on this leash. Hazel, come, good girl. Okay, there's an example of a command that didn't work. The, one of the questions I was often asked too is, you know, how often should I be giving a command? You, do you keep saying it over and over and over again. You know, Jesse, come, Jesse, come, Jesse, come. That was my last dog. My last dog's Jesse, who was never well trained in the first place. Things got repeated to him a thousand times. Ideally, you're just saying it once and you're not repeating that command. Hazel, sit. <gasps> Good girl. Should you be phasing out uh, the food or lure, food lures as, as rewards? And yes, you should. Another really common question I was asked it was that. It seemed that many of the pups would get just really dependent on that food. Like that's what they listen to. And if there's no food involved, they're like, well, maybe I'm not going to do the command. So what you're wanting to do is intermittently phase it out. So whereas, so with Hazel, I mean, she's responded to me because I've asked her to do a few things and she's been rewarded with food. But as you can see, her owners have since had her train. So she's now, you know, starting to respond without food. But you're gonna do it intermittently. So let's just try it here with Hazel. Hazel. Hazel, come. Hazel, sit. Good girl. As you can see there, she, you're a good girl. She, she responded without food because you've been trained to do so. Uh, but it was a matter of, of them sort of phasing it in gradually, where sometimes she got food, sometimes she didn't. How much time should you, should you be spending on you know, training your pup? Ideally, you're doing that daily. It doesn't need to be a very long time at all. It could be as short as five minutes a day, but that you're committing sort of this daily time starting when your pup comes home and I mean you're consistent. I was often asked, when's a good time to start socializing? As soon as your pup comes home, the real, some real common sense things though, though is, you know, you're socializing your puppy with other pups that are vaccinated, primarily for distemper and parvovirus. Avoid things like the dog walk where there's a big uh, reservoir of potential things like parvovirus, but you're exposing your pups to other pups. So, you know, making contact with other people that you know have vaccinated dogs, adult dogs, or puppies of similar age, but starting right away. Should you be considering training classes? You bet. I've taken all my dogs through training classes. I'd always advocate with all of my clients to consider going through a training class. You're gonna get so much out of it, out of one having a skilled qualified trainer sort of guide, guide you through the steps of dog training. You're gonna follow through with it because you're there, you're going to a training class and you're expected to accomplish certain things throughout the week. You're going to be socializing your puppy with a whole with different situations. It's super distractible. You go to a puppy class and there's all those other puppies to play with. You get to see just how well your training is. And more than anything else, just seeing anytime I had a client that took their pups through training class, they they were so much happier. Their dog was so so much better trained. And long term, made such a huge difference. Um, to having a really well-trained dog. So I, I can't say enough about you going through a, a, a qualified trainer and through a puppy training class. Thank you guys for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do now is first click up there to subscribe to my channel, click down there to like this video, and then go ahead and click that link directly in the box below. And then when you do that and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies. Plus you got to give a like to this video and give a thumbs up to Hazel.